Hello guys and welcome to this quick review and a little tutorial for this pretty cheap little gaming laptop. It's the HP Pavilion Gaming Laptop 15. Well, I guess that's what it's called. It's a pretty long name. This is one of the cheaper laptops that I can find in the market and since my older laptop is kind of broken and that I cannot bring it out anywhere soon so I'm gonna have to find another replacement. So this is the one. This one was among one of the cheaper ones. So let's see if this laptop can compare to my older laptop with even cheaper price. There's a tip that I have for you guys from my personal experience is that if you want to buy something expensive, you're probably better off buying branded stuff like HP. You know HP. If you're gonna buy something expensive, you might wanna not take any risks and buy the cheap stuff because, you know, they might have bad aftermarket service or maybe they have bad quality, they don't have the reputation. So if you're gonna buy something that's kinda expensive like a laptop, which is something that you're gonna be using for a long time, you're better off getting something maybe a little bit more expensive but at least it's from a well-known brand. So here's the specs for this laptop. You should ignore the new hard disk and the new RAM. This laptop comes with 8GB of RAM and a 500GB Samsung SSD. And it has one 2.5 inch space for another SSD because that's what they intended. I'll show you why later. You can put a hard disk in there but you're gonna need to do some retrofitting as I'll demonstrate you later. So here it is, it's a matte black, plasticky, with a little chrome logo and the logo itself is chrome in green, which is kind of their color but this is not the omen, so this is sort of their pavilion gaming color, which is sort of a green color and this laptop's body is gonna be pretty prone to fingerprints, so you're gonna be wiping them off if you're gonna use it a lot, especially the chrome logo this is one of those thin bezel screen laptops so 15 inch is no problem it still feels kinda small and it is very thin it's sort of light as well it weighs in I think at 2.3 kilograms which is alright for a gaming laptop but this being a thin gaming laptop it's gonna have a little bit of a problem in the cooling department as you can see, there's only one big giant hole near the back. There is no other venting holes for the RAM or hard disk. Also, there is going to be a little bit of a heat issue, as I'll demonstrate to you later, but it's no big deal. So now I'm going to show you how to change the hard drive or access the RAM by just removing the back panel. So it's a pretty simple process. There are no hidden screws. You just have to unscrew every screw you can see on the back panel. So let's get on with it. Once you're done, find a little bit of the corner and use your fingernails or a credit card and just slide the card all around the edge. You hear a few clicking sounds that you so that you know the clips are all unclipped and then you can just pull the back panel out. It's a pretty simple process but you need to give it a little bit of force but not too much force because you, of course it's gonna break. So just pull it gently, make sure all the clips are unclipped and do not brute force it, otherwise you might risk breaking the back panel. And then that's it. All you have to do is pull the back panel out and here's all the insides of the laptop. So here's the RAM wrapped in some black tape and the SSD as well. So all you have to do is peel it off and you can access the RAM. And this is the 2.5 hard disk that we're talking about. Right now it's just a dummy little plastic there as a placeholder if you want to put your new SSD inside there as well. So right now I'm going to show you where the RAM is. So this part, all you have to do is just pull off the black tape and it'll show you the SSD and the RAM together. So once you pull off the black tape, you can see that this is their original RAM. It's a Samsung branded 8GB RAM. And this is their 500GB SSD, also from Samsung. So this, there's two RAM slots for this laptop, so you can choose to store a double channel RAM if you like. So now we're moving on to the hard disk bay. So this is a dummy hard drive. You just have to unscrew the trays. There are three screws on the side. So you just have to unscrew them and the whole tray can just simply pop out. So you gotta make sure to also unplug the cables there. You can see the cables. 
so make sure you unplug that. So here it is, a little piece of plastic pretending to be the hard drive and right now I'm going to show you how to install a hard disk in there. So what I'm going to install to this laptop right here is a 1TB hard disk, a new set of HyperX RAMs and the original SSD. So here's also a tutorial on how to install the hard disk into this laptop. So first of all you have to take out the plastic dummy hard disk and install the real hard disk into the tray and put some screws in it. And then all you have to do is just connect this and connect it back to the motherboard with the ribbon cable. It's a pretty simple process but I will show you why that's gonna be a problem later. So now if you notice that the cable is facing the wrong way which means the hard disk has to be facing upside down. But here's the problem installing the hard disk upside down is that if you look at this plastic dummy, this dummy is fit for a SSD and this hard disk is slightly taller than the normal 2.5 SSD so there's gonna be a little problem it will not fit into the tray because the screws are in the wrong place as you can see in the holes there so I'm going to use some tape to fix this up because you can see that this cover it, it actually has space for the 2.5 hard disk it's just that the tray itself doesn't have the proper screw holes for this so I'm going to have to use some tape instead of using the screws so let's hope the tape will hold this thing back together so here it is I use some tape to tape up the hard disk into the tray without using any screws it is pretty secure like that and I don't think it's gonna fall out anywhere because it's pretty tightly packed in here so I wouldn't worry about it so snap all the ribbon connectors back there and you're good to go just screw them back to the laptop so it's pretty simple just put it back the way you took it out with all the screws in there and you're good to go so this is what it looks like it might look a little sketchy but do not worry it's pretty secure in there so all you have to do is just put the ribbon back into the motherboard close up the clip and put all the screws back in there and so here it is the hard disk is a little bit taller but do not worry about it the back panel has enough space for this hard disk and now it's time to put the RAMs in the slots so it's a pretty simple process all you have to do is push them into the clips and you're good to go and next up is to put their NVMe SSD back into the place it's also pretty simple all you have to do is push it into the slot and screw it back and also don't forget to put the heatsink back on the heatsink is only powered by tape so all you have to do is press it down it might bounce back up but don't worry about that the back panel is going to push it back down so all you have to do is put the heatsink there and then screw it do not screw the SSD before you put the heatsink and now you can just put the tape back on I don't know why the tape is there for but let's just put it back on and once you're done with that it's time to put the cover back on so you just put the cover over the laptop and slowly press each clip in and make sure all the clips are in if they're not in they'll pop out a little bit and you'll be able to see it so all you have to do is just press around the edges don't press too hard just make sure the clips are all in there and then you can put all the screws back together and now it's finally time to open up the laptop so here it is it's a very cleanly designed gaming laptop I wish more gaming laptops were designed like this really low profile without a lot of light and overly designed lines this looks like one of their high-end laptops with the speaker grill up top and of course the power buttons up on the left it's a very small little power button which you're gonna have to press a little bit harder down or maybe use your fingernails because it's kind of small and here's the mouse that I got for free when I bought this laptop and also a bag here and here it is it's a pretty simple gaming laptop there is nothing special about it it's just cheap and it works and it's of normal quality and by the time I have uploaded this video I will have been using this laptop for about four months now and of course this laptop is doing fine so far there's nothing wrong about it and I will keep reporting back if there's anything wrong or if there's anything happening so this is a pretty okay gaming laptop there's nothing too bad there's nothing to shout about so just a pretty normal laptop 
Alright, so here's the keyboard. It's only lit in green and there's only one color, which is fine by me. And it's a pretty normal keyboard. It's kind of responsive, very springy, which is good. And of course, there's the speaker grill on the top. And there's the exhaust fan right underneath the screen. This is going to be a little bit of a problem if you're gaming too hard. The hot air might get to the screen a little bit and it might heat up the speaker part. So you might want to put your hands off there. So right now I'm doing a little bit of a benchmark. So you can take a look and maybe compare it to your own laptop for a little bit of compare. And see how much better or how much worse this is. This is powered by a 1050 3GB. And right now I'm rendering something in Adobe's media encoder and the RAM is currently full and the fan is rather quiet. This is a pretty quiet gaming laptop. The fan is loud but it's not as loud as most of the gaming laptops that I have so far and all my friends laptops. This is among the lower end of the noise level. So if you notice the left side of the laptop is a little smaller the mouse pad is closer to the left which is a little bit of a problem if you're gaming because your hand might get into the trackpad but there is an option to disable it so that's not much of a problem the problem here is that the up and down arrow buttons are in one and they're split in half and they're quite tiny so that's gonna be a problem if you if your game requires you to press the up and down buttons a lot and here's a little size comparison with one of the other laptops that I have. This is a pretty normal 15 inch laptop with kind of thick bezels and it's a little bit bigger than the HP. As you can see in the screen here it's a little taller and it's a little bigger as well. And since the RAM and the hard disk is placed on the right side, so the left side will be relatively cool while you're gaming. and. There's only a few games that requires you to use the arrow button, so the heat on the right side wouldn't be such a big problem. Because most of the time, if you're gaming with the laptop, your left hand is going to be on the palm rest most of the time, and luckily for you, the heat is mostly on the right side, and the top exhaust part. So you don't have to worry about your hands getting singed. So that's it, that's the only main issue that I find on this laptop, which is the heat issue on your palms. It's really not that big of a deal actually, if you, it's not really that hot but it just gets kind of warm so maybe you'll get used to that. So here it is, the quick review of this HP laptop that I just got. It's a pretty good little laptop, kind of worth the money if you're gonna buy it. It might be a little outdated using the 3rd gen Ryzen or maybe you wanna wait for the new laptop series to come. Or maybe if you can't wait, you can get one of these. But this is getting a little old, so maybe you might want to wait for a new laptop. But you're going to have to upgrade the RAM and maybe get a hard disk for yourself if 500GB is not enough. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll post some more gaming tests for this laptop. I'll see you next time.